is the category of the Islamic movement, who seek the source of legitimacy in Islam, because Islam is universally accepted as a source of authority for those who adopt it. So for now, we have only two or three countries in the world of Islam which are uh, Islamic, which have an Islamic government and which uh, bases itself on the constitution of Allah, which is, of course, the Quran and the Hadith and the other Islamic traditions. And those are uh, Iran, for now, um, uh, Sudan, to a great extent, and during the time of the Taliban in, uh, in Afghanistan, we had a three or four year experiment, which, of course, was uh, tortured by the Americans uh, when they invaded Afghanistan in December uh, 19, uh, 2002. And when that happened, uh, throughout the, so we, we could, uh, uh, if you like, uh, estimate or evaluate uh, the kind of regime you are going to have according to whether or not they follow those basic rules. Sometimes those borders were confused. For example, in, those, in the first category of what they call the revolutionary regimes, you could see that those regimes which were republican, revolutionary, were also adopting something of the monarchical. Because you see, in many of those regimes, the fathers, the, the actual ruler, appointed his son to follow him. So as a matter of fact, they created dynasties. That happened in Syria. And that what Mubarak wanted to do, and what was one of the triggers for his removal from power, and that is what the president of Yemen was trying to do until he, he is going to be removed uh, from power. And that's what Gaddafi in Libya wanted to do. In other words, you see that the conservative regimes, which were usually Muslim, are confused little by little, or merging little by little, with the, the category of the monarchy. And therefore, you ask yourself, we, where is exactly the difference? And one, uh, uh, another principle that one has to keep in mind is the fact that the Islamic countries uh, or the Islamic uh, parties who want to establish an Islamic country are the only ones who may have legitimacy in the eyes of the masses. Because while uh, no opposition is permitted in all those countries, in all three categories, there is only one ruler and there is no opposition. I mean, there is opposition, but instead of being in parliament, like in democracies, it is in prison, usually. And therefore, it does not manifest itself, it cannot manifest itself in that kind of system. Now, those uh, Islamic movements who are waiting in the aisles to see their government, which is illegitimate, uh, uh, to fall, in order to replace it, are also the best organized parties in those countries. And therefore, every time a leader or a ruler of that sort falls or is about to fall, everybody talks about Muslim brothers taking over. Muslim brothers taking over, first of all, because they are more popular than others, and more popular not necessarily because their ideology is more attractive. They are more popular because while in the opposition, they operate very wisely. And they establish a social system, social network, which, uh, uh, which uh, provides for the needs of the people that the governments usually do not provide. And therefore, that, that makes them very, very popular in the eyes of the people. An example, in the 90s, there was a major earthquake in Cairo. Uh, buildings collapsed because they were uh, badly built and so on and so forth. And the government was nowhere to, to be seen. Hundreds of people died. War crashed simply under the buildings and so on. The Muslim brothers were there. They set tables outside. They prepared hot food. They took kids into into the mosques or into private houses. They bring, brought in 
their doctors in order to extend a medical help that the government could not extend. And they took all these miserable people who had nowhere to go uh, under their wings. And therefore, what, what impression do the people get? They get, oh, the government is nowhere to be seen. But who takes care of us? Who, who bothers at all to think about our fate? We, the miserable people on the street. Only the Muslim brothers. And therefore, the Muslim brothers in Egypt, in Jordan, and even in Syria, uh, under that core cool regime of the Assads, accumulate a tremendous amount of goodwill among the population. And the population knows that, that when the day comes, when there is need for an alternative to the government, it is us who are, uh, I mean, it's the Muslim brothers who are going to get the votes of the people. And that kind, that kind of uh, scenario is not imaginary, because it happened once, 1992, after 20 years of the FLN, that one, one of those revolutionary regimes in Algeria was ruling in, in that style, they declared suddenly that there will be free elections. And indeed they were, 1992. And who came on top? The Muslim Brothers. In every country they are called differently, but it doesn't matter. It's always the same thing. And when they came on top, the military junta uh, uh, walks in and says, ah, oh, no, we want democracy, but provided you don't win. We, we want democracy that places us in government, not yours. And the West and America made the biggest mistake that they unfortunately persist in today, which is to support the military junta instead of supporting the results or the consequences of the democracy they had been championing and advancing and advocating for decades before. So this movement say very simply, hey, what kind of hypocrisy is that? They support democracy, but provided it's democracy they want, what can, that's hypocrisy. And therefore, America is hated, Europe is hated, and rightly so from their point of view. They say, we cannot count on that. So this is the big, the, the greatest dilemma. You want to consider it good or bad, it's a matter of, uh, of, uh, of your personal view, of course. But uh, to my mind, this is the, the, the big dilemma that well, we in Israel we are going to face too. Do we support, as we did, Mubarak, perhaps we didn't have the choice, and he was our darling because he kept the peace for 30 years and so on and so forth, or are we going to support democracy as we say? Despite the fact that democracy means, or may mean, not necessarily, but it may mean the rise of Muslim brothers. The rise of Muslim brothers will mean necessarily, almost guaranteed, the first thing that they will do is to cancel the peace treaty with Israel. And we don't want to find ourselves in that situation again, of war in the Sinai and so on and so forth. And hence, the very difficult uh, situation where the Israeli government, like all the Western governments in Europe and America, uh, will find themselves uh, uh, through, through the years to come.